Are you wondering how you can create a lightning text effect in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius. I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years. And in this Embargo Task Plus tutorial, I'll put my experience to use as I show you step by step how you can create this lightning text effect using Adobe Illustrator. To complete this tutorial, you'll need this Robinson font, which you can get from Envato Elements. So make sure to check out Envato Elements, where with a simple subscription, you can get unlimited access to millions of creative digital assets, such as music, graphics, photos, fonts, and many more. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Also in the description, you can find a link that will get you to the Envato Task Plus website, where you can follow the written version of this tutorial. Let's move to Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop-down menu, set the width to 850 and the height to 580 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then you can click this button to create your new document. Press Ctrl and minus to zoom out a bit. And before we start the work on the design, let's open all the panels that will be used throughout this tutorial. All you have to do is go to Window in the menu bar. First of all, make sure that the control panel is active. And then open all the panels that have this check mark. Now go to View and Show Grid to enable a grid. Again, go to View and this time check Snap to Grid to enable the Snap to Grid feature. And for this tutorial, we need a grid line every one pixel. So go to Edit, Preferences, Guides and Grid. Just enter one in this box. Click OK to make the changes. And let's start the work on the design by selecting the ellipse tool from your toolbar. Select the stroke and remove the color. Double click the fill color and replace it with black. And then you can click on your artboard to create a 10 by 1 pixel shape. With this shape selected, press Ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on your shape. Switch to the anchor point tool from your toolbar and just click these two points to turn them into sharp points. When you're done, select your entire shape and move to the brushes panel to save your shape as an art brush. First of all, open the flyer menu and go to select all unused to select all these unused brushes and delete them. And then click this button to save your selected shape as an art brush. Keep most of the settings as they come. Just change the colorization method to tints to make sure that you will be able to change the color of the brush once you apply it. Click OK to save your brush inside the brushes panel. Then you can delete this shape. Press Ctrl and 0 and Ctrl minus to zoom in on your entire artboard and switch to the rectangle tool from your toolbar to create the background. Replace the fill color with 9, 23, and 72. Just click on your artboard to create an 870 by 600 pixels shape. Move to the control panel and make sure that the alignment is set to artboard. And then simply click these two buttons to easily center your selected shape. Hold control and click outside your selection to deselect it. Move to the Layers panel and lock this shape to make sure that you will not select or move it by accident. And then switch to the Type tool from your toolbar to add the text. First of all, select that Robinson font which you got from Envato Elements. Increase the font size to 250 and just click on your artboard to type in Electric. Press the Escape key to easily switch to the Selection tool. Replace the text color with 62, 249, and 254. Move your text roughly in the center of the artboard, and then go to Type and Create Outlines. Press Shift, Ctrl, and G to ungroup this resulting group of shapes. Select just this eye shape and delete it. And reselect the rectangle tool from your toolbar to create a 60 by 180 pixels shape. You can press Ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on this new shape. 
switch to the direct selection tool from your toolbar and go to object path and add anchor points to add four more anchor points for your selected shape now select just this point hold down the shift key and drag it 15 pixels to the right like this keep in mind that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 15 pixels now move to this bottom point remember to hold down the shift key and drag it 15 pixels to the left select this point and drag it 15 pixels up and for this point let's drag it 15 pixels down like this when you're done move to this point and this time let's drag it 75 pixels down and then 25 pixels to the left and for this bottom left point let's go 75 pixels up and 25 pixels to the right hold down the shift key to select these two points and remove them deselect this shape press ctrl 0 and ctrl minus to zoom back on your entire design switch back to the selection tool let's unlock this background shape for a few moments hold down the shift key to select it along with this letter shape click again on it to highlight it and make it the reference shape and then you can click this button to easily align your letter shape with the right edge of the background let's select again the background along with this letter shape click again the background to make it the reference shape and this time click this button to perfectly align your letter shape with the left edge of the background now you can lock again the background and return to your shapes select this one hold down the shift key as you click and drag and let's move it 160 pixels to the right like this again remember that you can have a look inside the info panel to know exactly when you get to 160 pixels let's move to this other shape again remember to hold down the shift key and drag it 160 pixels to the left like this once you're done, you can select all of these shapes. First, click this button and then this one to make the space between your shapes even. Now go to Object, Compound Path and Make to turn your shapes into one compound path. Center this compound path using these two buttons and then focus on the Appearance panel to start the work on your text effect. Press Shift and X to easily swap the fill and stroke color settings. Select the stroke and increase the weight to 2 points. Replace the color with 0, 88 and 179. And then go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Zigzag. Check these two boxes. Set the size to 2 and the ridges to 2. Click OK to apply this first effect and then go again to Effect and Distort and Transform but this time select Roughen. Again check both of these boxes, set the size to 5 and the detail to 10. Click OK to apply this second effect and go one more time to Effect, Stylize and Round Corners. Set the radius to 1 pixel, click OK to apply this new effect and return to the appearance panel to duplicate your stroke using this button. Lower the weight of this new stroke to one point and replace the color with 0, 166 and 215 and then again duplicate it. For this one replace the color with 78, 194 and 241 and then open the zigzag effect that's already applied. All you have to do is increase the ridges to 4, click OK to apply this new effect and then again duplicate your top stroke. Just change the color of this new stroke to 148, 241 and 255 and then duplicate it. Decrease the weight of this new stroke to 0.5 and then open the zigzag effect that's already applied. Increase the size to 4 and decrease the ridges to 2. Click OK to apply this new effect and then duplicate your top stroke. 
apply your airbrush for this new stroke. Change the color to 251, 255, and 247. Decrease the stroke weight to 0.5. And then duplicate this stroke. Lower the weight of this new stroke to 0.25. Open the roughen effect that's already applied and just increase the size to 10 pixels. Click OK to apply this new effect. And then use this button to add a new stroke for your selected compound pad. Again, apply your R brush. Replace the color with 68, 78, and 255. Increase the stroke weight to 6 points. Don't forget to change the blending mode to overlay. And then go to Effect, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Set the radius to 10 pixels. Click OK to apply this effect. Reselect this top stroke and duplicate it using this same button. Replace the color with 251, 176, and 64. Open the blur effect that's already applied and just lower the radius to 8 pixels. Click OK to apply this change and let's add a new stroke using this button. Again, you need to apply your R brush. Replace the color with 134, 250, and 242. Change the blending mode to overlay and increase the stroke weight to 3 points. And then move to the bottom of the appearance panel to select this bottom stroke and duplicate it. Select this bottom stroke, increase the weight to 3 points and replace the color with 0, 27 and 135. And then go to Effect, Stylize and Outer Glow. Change the blending mode to normal, increase the opacity to 100% and set the blur to 5 pixels. Change the glowing color to 62, 249, and 254. Click OK and OK to apply this effect. Return to the appearance panel and let's duplicate this stroke. Focus on this new stroke. Replace the color with 9, 23, and 72. And then open the outer glow effect that's already applied. All you have to do is increase the blur to 30 pixels, replace the glowing color with 48, 231, and 237. Click again OK and OK to apply this effect, and then reselect this bottom stroke to duplicate it. Focus on this new stroke. First of all, remove this outer glow effect, and then go to Effect, Stylize, and Drop Shadow. Change the blending mode to normal, increase the opacity to 100%, set the offset values to 0 and 2, lower the blur to 0 pixels, make sure that the shadow color is set to 9, 23 and 72, click OK and OK to apply this shadow effect, reselect this stroke and let's apply a second drop shadow effect. Just increase the blur to 2 pixels. Click OK, and this will be your final text effect. Let's save it as a graphic style so that you can easily apply all these settings on any type of path that you will create. Just focus on the graphic styles panel and simply click this button to save your graphic style. Now that you've got your text, let's use the pen tool to draw a simple path that goes out from the text which will later stylize and make it look like it's a lightning bolt. You can add a white stroke for this path to make it more visible. Continue to add more paths like this until you end up with something that's somewhat similar with this. Once you're done, you need to select all of your paths. You can hold down the shift key and click the text to deselect it. And then click your graphic style from the graphic styles panel to apply all of these settings. Hold down the shift key to select these four strokes and remove them. And then select these four strokes one by one to apply your R brush. When you're done, you need to select each stroke one by one and adjust the stroke weight. Let's start with these four and lower the stroke weight to 0.5.
moving to the next two, let's lower the stroke weight to 0.25. For the next two, let's take it down to three points. And finally, for the top one, set the stroke weight to 1.5. When you're done, move to the graphic styles panel and click again this button to save your second graphic style. For the final touches, reselect the pen tool from your toolbar and use it to draw a few smaller pads that should look somewhat like this. When you're done, you need to select them all, apply your second graphic style, focus on the appearance panel and disable these strokes. And with this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.